Hello, I'm Ryan Boyd, and this is going to be a very brief tutorial video for the new Butter software. Butter is currently still in uh, kind of a closed or private alpha version, so in theory you're only seeing this video if I've shared the software with you personally. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. Now Butter is essentially a program that lets you build your own text analysis pipelines without having to do any coding or programming whatsoever. It can seem a little bit daunting at first. I'm not going to cover everything the software can do in this video. I just want to give you a very basic sense of how the program works. Now in this window you can see there's three different parts. On the left there's a description window. In the middle there's a list of the plugins that are installed for the software. And then on the right is the actual analysis pipeline that you can build. I'm going to go ahead and show you a few examples of the plugins and cover a couple of the basic parts of this program that you'll need to get through uh, building some basic pipelines. Now when you click a plugin, you'll see that the description box changes to give you information about that specific plugin. And there are three really important parts here. And they're all included right here uh, beneath the basic plugin information. There's the top level plugin, which can either be true or false. And then there's the plugin input and output types. Now a top level plugin always has to be at the very top of an analysis pipeline. So if you're going to chain a bunch of plugins together, anything that is a top level plugin has to be on the top. And if I try to add something to the top that is not a top level plugin, uh, you'll see that it gets highlighted in red to let you know there's a problem. Now the other two pieces of information, input and output type, this just tells you what type of data the plugin takes as input and what kind of data it gives as output. And so when you're stringing together different plugins, you want to make sure that the input and output types link up with each other so that the output of one plugin is handed to the correct type of input for the next plugin. Now I'll give you a quick example of what this looks like. So I've got a couple of data sets here. Uh, one of these is a bunch of different TED Talks that are included in TXT files. And one of these is a bunch of papers, academic papers that are PDF files. So what I'm going to do is I just want to convert formats for these files. So first thing I'm going to do is add the load PDF files from folder plugin. And what this will do is it'll read in PDF files and then do things with them. And for every plugin, once you've added it, and you can add it either by highlighting it in the middle and then clicking Add Plugin to Pipeline, or you can just double click it. Once you've added it over here, every plugin almost, uh, you'll want to go in and change the settings for the plugin. So for the load PDF files from folder plugin, the only real setting we have to worry about is telling it where the folder is that has our PDF files. And we can choose to include subfolders. This doesn't have any, but in case we did, that'll do it. And then we're going to uh, save these as text files. And so we'll tell it where we want to save. I'm going to make a new folder to do that. And while we're at it, I'm going to start a new plugin chain where we'll load in all of those um, all of those TED talks from those text files, and then we'll just save them to a CSV. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this output to TED Talk CSV. And I'll make sure that I set the input settings on this. So I'll tell it where those TED Talks are. 
the term text files. And so now really what we have here are, are two separate pipelines. So what Butter is going to do is it's going to run everything that's connected to this first node first. So this is a top level plugin, as you can see over here, and it's at the very top level of a chain. This is also a top level plugin, and it's at the top level of a chain. And so what this will do is first it'll go through and read all those PDF files and save them to TXT files. Once it finishes this entire chain, it'll move on to this next chain and do all of this. So everything is set up. I'm going to go ahead and click Begin Analysis to start the program running. And then I'm going to open up this folder just so you can see what's going on. And you can see it's already running through uh, plugin chain number one, which is the load PDF files from folder. And it should be putting them all here in this new folder I made, Papers TXT. And there they all are. And we can open these up and take a look at them. And all of the text is being converted from those PDF files to TXT files. And it looks like it finished both chains. The second one here, this should be a CSV file that includes all of those texts and it's aggregated them all into a single CSV file with each row being a different TED Talk. So it looks like it worked. So that is the absolute basic type of uh, thing that you can do with Butter. Now you see there's a zillion other plugins here. We can do all kinds of stuff. And we can do that all in, in big batches if we really want to. So let's say we want to uh, take all of those papers that are in PDF files and we want to do a few things with them. So let's first start off by adding this to the top. We'll go in and make sure the settings are set so it knows where these files are located. And let's look at some of these language analysis plugins. So a lot of these plugins, you'll notice, not all, but a lot of them take tokens as input types. Now this is a, a really common thing for a lot of different um, types of text analysis plugins. What this means is that we'll want to first take a text and tokenize it, which splits up all of the words and punctuations into individual units for analysis. Now for English, probably the, the best tokenizer is going to be this Twitter aware tokenizer. You want to use this one most of the time. And if you want to do some additional processing of your texts, you can load them in, tokenize them, and then remove stop words, or you can lemmatize the different words. Most of the time, you won't want to use those unless you know what you're doing. So for now, we're just going to load in the texts, tokenize them, and let's calculate some lexical richness scores. So this is going to give us things like type token ratio, uh, moving average type token ratio, MTLD, and a bunch of others. That takes tokens as input. It takes, or I'm sorry, it generates an output array as output. So I'm going to go ahead and add that one. And what if we want to also do readability metrics? So I'm going to go ahead and try to add this, and you'll see there's a couple problems already. So this is highlighted in red, and it uh, gives you a little bit of information about the error when you hover over it. So there's two issues. One is that uh, it doesn't take, or I'm sorry, it takes a string as input, and it's connected to something that gives an output array as output. So that's problem one. So what we can do is we can drag this up one level to, to move it to somewhere else. Now we see it's still red. Well, the problem is, is it's still taking a string as an input, but it's connected to this plugin, which gives tokens as output. So we want to give the readability metrics uh, strings as input. Now the original top level node here load PDF files from folder gives us a string as output. So we can just go ahead and connect this right up to 
that very top level plugin there. Now these both give output array as the output type. For the most part, what you're going to want to connect those two are output to CSV plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to each of these. And so what this will do is it'll read in each uh, PDF file individually, tokenize each file, calculate lexical richness scores, and then save the lexical richness output to a CSV file. The readability metrics will then be calculated and then that will be saved to a CSV file for every single PDF. And you can go on and add as much stuff as you want to these. If we also want to do part of speech tagging, we can connect that to this top level because it takes string as input. And then some of these plugins have little helpers. So you see that the part of speech tagger gives a tagger output object as the output type. You don't really need to know what that means. You just need to know what that can be connected to. Most of these helpers will take uh, the, the correct type of output from what they go with and then convert it into something you can use. And so now, before I forget, what I need to do is I need to set the settings for each of these output plugins so we can choose where the output's going to go. So for the lexical richness output, I'm going to go to the settings of that plugin and change the file name to something that uh, tells us what's going to be in there. And I need to set the settings for each of these output nodes. And for this example, I'm just going to turn the processing power all the way to 100. Um, usually, you'll want to just leave it at uh, 75%, but I'm turning it up to 100 for now just so we can move a little bit faster. I'm working on a really crappy slow laptop right now, so we probably won't uh, sit here while this whole process finishes. We'll just let it run through some of the files and we'll stop and take a look. Now, as a side note, you'll see that when I set the settings for all of those, it actually already created all of the output files. They're all empty. There's nothing in them right now. Uh, but that's something you can keep in mind if you want to, sometime down the road and you're doing really complicated pipelines, if you want to take the output from one plugin and do something with it in an appropriate uh, plugin down the road, you can actually go ahead and set it up. We're not going to do that now. You probably won't ever want to do that. Uh, but here we go. You can go ahead and click Begin Analysis. Now, all of this is just part of a single plugin chain. Um, so what's going to do is first it's going to initialize the whole plugin chain, which it just finished. And for something like part of speech tagging, it can take a while to initialize depending on your computer, because it has to load up a really big model. But we can see that it's now running. This little wheel tells us that it's currently active. And I'm running a lot of stuff. Readability metrics can be kind of slow to calculate. Part of speech tagging can be kind of slow. Um, so for this example on my laptop, this could take quite a while for all these to run and finish. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel just so it uh, begins to start wrapping things up so we can look at what's in each of these CSV files. And when you click cancel, it won't cancel immediately. Any texts that are currently being analyzed, it will finish analyzing those before it completely comes to a stop. That way, nothing breaks, essentially. Um, it, you're not halting a kind of computationally sensitive process while the software is uh, running. It'll wrap up any in-process text and then it'll stop. And because some of these are pretty um, computationally intensive, again, especially for this laptop, 
it might take a good 10 or 15 more seconds, maybe a little longer for it to completely finish doing everything that it was doing. On a better computer, all of this would be uh, going much, much more quickly. And it's finally finished. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is in these output files. So we can see again, we have separate output files for each of these plugins that we had set. And when we go and open them up, we see the output is saved. Here are the lexical richness scores. We have type token ratio, moving average type token ratio, and a bunch of other richness metrics. In the part of speech, we get different percentages for different part of speech categories. And there are different settings you can set for that. The same is true for the different readability metrics, and so on. So that is a full example of how to build and run a pipeline uh, using Butter in its current form. There are a bunch of different plugins here. Some of the more complicated ones you can use to analyze uh, conversational data and dyadic data to find similarities. Uh, between speakers. There are a bunch of different things you can do with content coding and dictionaries. There's a bunch of built-in. You can add your own. Uh, the, the possibilities are already pretty large and will continue to grow uh, as the software continues to be developed. So that's everything you need to know for now.